Ghost of Caliban, The Saga of Luther, Legendary Lord, A Dark Angel Story, by J. M. R. Dillon. Chapter 3 Founders of Secrets Since the time of the heretical rebellion, therein harboring the destruction of Caliban, additionally the likely defeat and disappearance of the Legion Primarch Lionel Johnson, descriptions outlined initially have been catalogued in the Imperial records were vile, heretical, riddled with controversies. The extraordinary conclusions within the ensuing inductions noted creative script entered, replacing original records. Summaries of reenactments and explanations of how such catastrophe could occur, seemingly simultaneously. The Founder's decision to commit to such horrendous misconduct wherein only to alleviate any eluded mystery and perceived deception within the chapter. Founders of the Circle, having been stationed on the Lion's Battle Barge and later Planet Side during the schism, were all privy to first-hand accounts of what had transpired on Caliban. Consequently, the truth and therein lined with many ill-favored suspicions. Wherever such damning counts proclaimed and validated to the wired Imperium, the encompassing departments and their comprising the governing body met with probable judgment, consequentially bestowing excommunicate traitorous to the Dark Angels chapter and the objection of the Legion, consequently contributing condemnation to its subchapters. The atrocities and planetary destruction, at all costs, must be kept preserved and concealed. 1. The inner circle was invariably composed of five incumbents. When circumstances ensued, all five members assembled, the council, having to convene on matters of importance. Extraordinary proprietors of the Legion are chosen and designated with maintaining the chapter's secrets. Firmly secure the facade outlined therein. Those considered extensively committed to ensuring the Circle of Secrets Councils, guidelines, and requirements are fulfilled and achieved. Unbeknownst to each prospect is that they undergo continuous monitoring and rigorous testing. Only the most courageous of the Legion's warriors was one who had displayed astounding charisma and whose leadership is second to none. Additionally, a spiritual commander of unconditional devotion to the Emperor and the Legion surpasses all within the chaplain's conclave. Thirdly, a chief medical marine whose proficiency and unwavering courage, as well as a keen sense of duty in relinquishing all pity, rendering no remorse, carrying out all mandates and directives. In each branch, only one is selected and deemed the finest legionnaires. Sworn by blood, failure met only in death. Distinguished with prestige titles as Chapter Master, Chief Librarian, High Order Interrogator Chaplain, Forge Master Tech Marine, Master Class Senior Apothecary, and lastly, the Keeps Overseer, the Watcher over the Damned and Fallen, the Warden. Together these venerated legionnaires are who make the council. Senior dark angels with a century's proficiency, battle-tested, wars waged throughout the galaxy, are carried forth in the emperor's name. Sowing fear and reprisal that is synonymous of the dark angels while representing their gene father, Lion L. Johnson covertly protecting and retaining the Legion's sacred knowledge to pass down throughout the following generations. 2. Each member is entrusted with possessing one of the five keys designed to serve dual functions not only in unlocking hidden access points to the keep, Appearance unique merely to the Dark Angels chapter, recognized therein as ancient chapter relics. First of the five keys created was designed as a sword titled the Sword of Secrets, signaling the stature in commemorating the chapter master of the Dark Angels. 
Further two keys were forged into iconic equipments, one a rosarius for the Supreme High Chaplain, the other as a talisman titled the Amulet of Silence, worn by the Chief Librarian. The fourth key assembled is a medical cylinder. It has been crafted to be impenetrable and houses the cryogenically preserved DNA of the Primarch, exhibited as gene code. The fifth key digitally designed is a navigation device that will grant absolution to correctly navigating and authorizing the Vault and the Keep's database directives. Navigating through the Keep's cybersecurity is a treacherous labyrinth consisting of highly complex data protocols encrypted with numerous firewalls formulated to course mechanical malfunction, catastrophic machine failure, and elimination of neuron processors. The uninitiated would never guess such iconic items serve an additional function. Three of the council members are appointed with two companies of the Legion's most veteran warriors. Harold, as the death wing assigned to each company, consists of ten Legionnaires. Each space marine is equipped with the Legion's most devastating armaments and appointed with the chapter's fastest vessels. Six companies tasked with searching throughout the galaxies and stars, and one required venturing into the realm of chaos. Sixty space marines in total, dark angels by name, sons of the lion by blood, their hearts set in exact their Primarch retribution. The mission is to find the traitors, destroy their conclave, and capture the fallen alive if possible. 3. The Keep is already placed on high alert. Inadvertently, unaware are the 700 Dark Angels currently stationed on the Legions' fortress monastery, all oblivious to the urgency that stirs deep within the core of the rock. It contains seven holding cells and three cryogenic chambers, with two small quarters, the chaplain title Confession Rooms. Once deemed repented, the fallen are transferred to the reactor room, labeled the Purging Core, where only the traitor's ashes remain. These areas are what make up the entirety of the Keep. Located at its center is the command monitoring hub title Vault. The chaplain's warning glyph, blazing red, located at the lower right corner of his retinal display. Tech Marine to the Keep Brother Warden, the High Chaplain is within secured Vox range. I am patching you through now. High Order Interrogator Chaplain Warden, the alarm glyph is lit on my display. I am making my way to the keep. Status update. Is it the Arch Traitor or one of the Fallen? What protocols have you initiated? Warden to the keep. Hi, Chaplain. We have a possible security breach. The Fallen has been sedated for several days. To confirm, it is the Arch Traitor, High Chaplain. After running a psychological and physiological scan, the reading indicates it seems to be attempting to communicate. The recipient is unknown, but it appears that he is conversing with someone or something within itself. Auspec's scan indicates no alien life signs are present. The Forge Master is cataloging the fiend reaction into the Vault data bank. 4. The Forge Master is carrying out a diagnostic scan of the housing units and the Keep's Galal field. I have enacted protocol. Deep sleep. Initiation is underway. We await your guidance in purifying confidant before entering the heretic cell. High Chaplain Two clicks away from being at its cell. Proceeding with caution, I do not want to attract attention to my haste, Warden. Heed it not to alarm our brothers. Convene at the Arch Fiend cell door. Have the Forge Master enact the requirements in preparation of the cryogenic capsule immediately. Understood, Warden.
Warden. Confirm, High Chaplain. Warden to Forge Master. Prepare the capsule, awake its machine spirit, enact your blessing. Do whatever it takes. Just get that blasted machine operational and fast. We are putting the traitor on ice. Forge Master. As you bid, Warden, note the senior apothecary is absent from the rock. His mission to subsector... The warden interrupts. I know he is on a mission. Tech to the keep. The non-attendance of the apothecary is documented within the vault data log. His absence of duty in medically preparing and clearance of the traitor are highly perilous conclusions with the deficiency. I hold no regret in my cooperative decision. Tech Marine, override the capsule's medical authorization. Nullify the senior apothecary signature verification code. The ramifications of its demise, myself and the High Chaplain, have taken into account. Initiating the protocol. 5. With the keep's precautionary measures silently having been entailed with the possible breach. The High Chaplain marks his stride as his magnetic-plated armor boots rang off the plasteel-paneled floor. The resonating sound echoes down the ancient stone wall. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The High Chaplain proceeds through the corridors of the rock. Hastily, he selects the vacant routes as he maneuvers throughout the fortress. The High Chaplain's censors, having cataloged every biological code of the 700 Loyalist Battle Brothers currently stationed on the rock, notices something. Two additional lost souls are registered, one a heretic fallen, and the other the notorious arch-traitor. The Chaplain makes his way closer to his assigned entrance to the keep, alerted when his power suit censors pick up, the bio signs of two dark angels, a sergeant with a newly initiated Estarte. The chaplain's display screen maps the legionnaire's exact position just ahead there on sentry duty. He is nearly at the final corridor. The chaplain recedes his hurry pace so as not to draw attention. He stops at the cross junction just forward, approaching the hallway leading to his private chamber. The legionnaires both salute, making the sign of the aquila, hands in front of their battle-plated chest. The young marine addresses the high chaplain. Legionnaire 1 Superior High Chaplain, all is adequate, no irregularities to report. Making way to the meditation quarters? The sergeant legionnaire slightly bows toward the chaplain, an expression of respect, while he grumbles at the young legionnaire. 6. Sergeant. Silent young cub, it is not one's position to question the High Chaplain's intentions. Emperor, forgive. High Chaplain, the young brother meant no disrespect. Newly inducted to the Legion, he'll learn to report when ordered. Otherwise, keep quiet. High Chaplain. Youthful are our candidates when they undergo the chapter challenges. We acquire the aspirants from hive worlds, tribal colonies, backworld galaxy systems. Brother Sergeant, the few inductees that succeed in our Legion trials are still but children internally. I assure you, Sergeant, absolution will be obtained. You will further model, instruct, and help mold the young brother. Mature his outlook. He'll be attentive, purposeful with achievements, and come to fully understand the First Legion's doctrine, rank, and file. The Sergeant makes a fist while he bends his arm at the elbow as he beats his fist against his left breastplate, joined with a slight bow. High Chaplain Both of you take heed. I have cataloged your identification numbers. I expect you will be attending as faithful attendees at this morning's company meditation sermon. 
Fiery ruby red optics steadily gaze at the young Marine and Sergeant, the High Chaplain's customary skull helmet moving between the two, awaiting their compliance. High Chaplain Callo, brother, reflect on your openness. Focus your young mind on the Emperor's light. His hand will guide you through the darkened paths of rash youthfulness and one's ignorance. The Emperor guides us throughout our journey and growth. He delivers us from ourselves. 7. Legionnaire 1 Praise be, many thanks, I chaplain, for your insightful words. Apologies. I will be at the sermon and be mindful of my superior's instructions and the emperor's guidance. I will aim to be an exemplary marine of the first the throne protects. He stands at attention with his back against the corridor wall. Sergeant Marine Yes, sir, high chaplain. Thank you. The cub will learn the ways of the legion. Rank and file by the lion's will. Praise the emperor. The sergeant stands at attention as the chaplain assertively proceeds past the two enlightened, reprimanded legionnaires. He makes his way to the end of the corridor, stopping in front of the thick plasteel door, one of many assigned meditation chambers. This solemn sanctuary devoted to glorifying the emperor, still just beyond the door, like the legion, houses another secret. The hidden multi-security scanner is recessed in the stone above the steel door. It produces a short clicking sound as the mechanism admits a full panorama green light. Scanning in a parallel sweeping motion, it courses across the surface of the High Chaplain's solid green with black-trimmed hood. Underneath, his skull helmet is slightly obscured. The green light traces across the ridge of the helmet. The beam is continuing its scan as it reflects off his red optic lens. Completion finalized. As the green security beam dissipates, once reaching the end of his mask's chin bone, the verification of the High Chaplain bio ID signature and corresponding digital security glyphs hid in his helmet. The multi-scanner's interface, computing what the lock's mechanisms hidden yet still heard, are the multiple hammers' sounds. Clunk, 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 as thick steel shafts disengage. With the chamber door unlocked, it shifts back two centimeters, then slides to the right, granting access. The chaplain centered into his chamber, with the heavy steel door closing behind him. 8. The chaplain reminisces at the finely sculpted shrine, measurements of the memorial being three meters in height and two meters in width. Etched in the stone is a portrait of the emperor commemorating his son, Lionel Johnson. The resemblance to when the emperor of mankind conveyed to his son the Imperium and the First Legion. Concealed under his customary chaplain robes, Mag locked to his utility belt. The High Order chaplain reaches down with his left power gauntlet, armor fingertips, lightly grasp a hold of the traditional rosarius. The back side of the relic demagnetizes as he disengages it from his belt. Three black pearls and ten white pearls hung about a titanium-laced cord. Inherited from his predecessor, having been known only by the High Order Chaplain, is the location of the secret slot concealed within the calligraphy. Extended in his clasp, the interrogator chaplain places the ancient rosarius in the hidden niche within the stonework. There are several profound clicks, followed with a hissing sound as large, unseen locking pins slide out of place. The stone slab smoothly shifts to the right as an infrequently utilized hall is fully revealed. Stale vapors bellow out from the entrance. Various circular lights recessed into the stone ceiling illuminate to a soft dim. Ahead, fading down overshadowed hallways, awaits the unforgiven, remorseless unjust, whom the High Order Interrogator Chaplain, deemed penitent, are lucky. The chaplain, hand to exact, and by his will, are they held repented, thus adding another black pearl to his collection.